Greetings everyone, it's Alexor with a new build, and actually I'm very proud of this one. Because we finally have a functioning Hydra build. It even works at higher levels of pit and does well at bossing. Especially because I like the Hydra a lot, but I haven't really seen any good builds with it. But as you can tell, this is pit uh, 38, I believe. Enemies are level 137. Not insane, but good enough. And we're dealing with all of it. Just fine. I was doing... Um, what's it called? Infernal Halts. Tier 4. No problem. Tier 5 gets a little bit difficult, so it's not like absolutely overpowered. Then again, the build can't do it. I just don't have all the items yet. Oops, actually, uh, I gotta be careful to get my berry. Um, also, no master working. Like, this was completely bone normal items no master working and we're still doing infernal halts tier 4 just fine no problem so if you get your master working up you can go to higher levels no problem i didn't do it yet i wanted to give you this build anyway because i like it a lot i need time to prepare um so you can you could already tell that we also have not just the hydras they do most of our damage i keep shooting frozen orbs right so this is very closely aligned with the overpowered um, chain light, no, lightning spear sorcerer that's currently in meta, but just with the hydras, so to speak. So what is the build? Let's talk about it. Um, you have your hydras and you have your frozen orb, and the idea is the frozen orb casts a random conjuration due to the fractured winter glass, right? And this includes the Hydras, but not just. Could also be Lightning, Spear, and Ice Blades. And we also have the Ice Blades, but we only have them because they give us Barrier. Look, if I cast the Ice Blades, we gain Barrier. And we want to have the Barriers up all the time. We have the Ice Armor and the Flame Ship. We want to have this up all the time. Because this way, we um, survive better. And we also do more damage. So, um, the idea is sh you cast your Hydras like this all the time. Three times, and they run. And it's actually a lot of them, as you can tell. They have many heads. And then you just keep spamming your frozen orb onto enemies. That's how the build works. While you keep sort of your um, your armors up. So what do we do? Let's look at the skill tree. Very simple. We have up here the frozen orb. Only one level. The rest is from items. One level. And because we want to have this. Fire orbs explosion has a 5% chance to make all enemies vulnerable. Because that really ups our damage. So we focus on vulnerability here. And immobilize all the, the crown control we use. Then we have Potent Walling, that is really just for survivability. You definitely want to have three in that. Um, no, one in that and I have three in the item. Well, however you get it. Just at least have three in it, I would say. Three is sort of the minimum. Also that you get to your defensive skills, otherwise you can't, right? Firebolt, obviously. We use this for the enchantment, so we do burning damage. Classic, you get the idea. We never use the Firebolt for anyone who is new here, is new to Diablo. We never use the Firebolt themselves, we only get the enchantment effect. That means any direct damage from any skill we have burns enemies. And we also do more damage to burning enemies, so that fits very well. Here we have all defensive. We have one point in ice armor. And we want to have the shimmering ice armor because that gives us a reduced the cooldown. So you want to have all the barriers active all the time, pretty much, or available all the time. So what you do is while you're doing your thing, you cast your ice armor, then you wait. You attack with your frozen um, frozen orb. You see it's, going, it's over in a second, then you do your flame shield. It's usually over much faster, we still have barrier. And then you do also the ice blades, that gives you barrier again due to a passive. And then usually when this runs out roughly, you have the ice armor again. And if you do hits, you also gain them back fast. So you want to cycle these barriers all the time, so you keep your barriers up. That helps you a lot to survive. It's very important. Flame shield again, but we use actually the heal. That is great. 50% of your missing life. We get healed once it's activated. And of course, one point in teleport. Then classic. We go on the glass cannon always. Maxed out. And one point in elemental attunement. Because it's kind of cool. If you have a lucky hit with a crit. And we do a lot of crit, by the way. A lot of crit. 7% uh, chance to reset the cooldown of your defensive skills. Or any defensive skill. So that's very useful. Obviously the, obviously the Hydra. Maxed out and gained from items, and we want to have to crit Hydra. We don't want to do crits with it. It's not a burning build. We put one into the Ice Blades, and we even go down here into the Summoned Ice Blades, because the idea is this. 
Ice Blade's cooldown is reduced by 0.5 seconds each time it hits a vulnerable enemy. And then 20% of that is applied to your other skills. That means you're going to cast the Ice Blades a lot, but they will also be conjured by your Frozen Orb summons, right? So you will always have Ice Blades around. You will also do make the enemies always vulnerable. And when the Ice Blades hit a vulnerable enemy, it reduces the cooldown for Ice Blades by 0.5 seconds per hit. That's a lot, actually. And 20% of that 0.5, so that's 0.1, um, is also applied to your other skills. So the more you hit with your Frozen Orb and hit vulnerable enemies, this is especially powerful in Infernal Hearts, the, le the shorter your cooldowns are. So in Infernal Hearts, for example, when there's a lot of enemies, you have all your skills available all the time. It's pretty crazy. Uh, lucky Hit Chance, that helps us because Lucky Hit Lucky hit crits with the Hydra has have a chance to immobilize enemies. I think it was here somewhere. This one, yeah. No, with Pyromancy skills, Lucky Hits have a 21% chance to immobilize enemies for two seconds, even more while you're healthy. So this is why we actually go into the Lucky Hit, because we want to immobilize them, we want to vulnerable, make them vulnerable, etc. Clean. This one is great. Um, using a cooldown 20% of your maximum life as a barrier. So that you need this for the ice blades. Because Ice Blades is a skill with a cooldown, so if we use the Ice Blades, we gain barrier due to this passive. I wish I had more points in this, but that's what it is. Obviously, Conjuration Mastery maxed out also with items, more mana region, more damage, more movement speed. Uh, Icy Veil, I always like the Icy Veil because it gives me my barriers 20% more increased duration. That's always good. I always go for this, really. Um, yeah, Inner Flames. Deal more damage while healthy, increased crit damage against burning enemies, all of them are burning all the time. This will be just covered. Then here, more passives, burning enemy increases your mana region if you kill them. Less mana, deal more damage, all the pyromancy skills, and you heal for 3% of the maximum life for each nearby burning enemy. And of course, down here, this is just a crit one, right? You deal more crit, um, or fire crit damage is increased. Because in case you didn't know, your Hydras, your Conjurations, gain your crit chance and your crit damage, right? So the crit damage you do is also applied to all your minions. That's how it works in Diablo. So um, just get crit chance and crit damage up and your, your Hydras do a lot of damage. They actually really, they, they crit at this level without Master worked full. They crit for like 200-300k per head, which we have a lot. So that's kind of crazy. Paragon. Kind of simple, really. The first one we go with the Territorial because we need it really for survivability. The Sorcerer just dies fast. Um, so we got to make sure we have all the survivability and that just helps us 15% damage reduction against close enemies. Very great. And we do more damage to close one, but that's fine. Let's do this here because then we can actually see um, what's what's it called. It's the, the second one is the Elemental Summoner and we use the Conjurer. Um, because this gives conjuration skills have 20% increased duration. We want that for sure. And every five intelligence within range, they gain more damage. As you can tell at the top, 150% conjuration damage. So you want to get all the int around here as much as possible. Uh, yeah, it's int. I might have missed one. I did not. Good. And of course, this one. Skills have a 10% chance to reduce cooldown or mana cost. They also do bonus damage. Uh, as you can tell, that's maxed out. Then you want to go up here for non-physical damage and resistances. Always great. We go down here for conjuration damage, 15%, and more of that. And we take this one for extra mana and life. Next one is the Searing Heat with the Invocation. Searing Heat is powerful because of this. 12% chance, 12%, 12 increased crit chance. We want to have this. Um, equal to the fire damage bonus, yes. And of course here we have fire damage and crit chance. This is all crit chance and fire damage. You want to have these. And with the invocation, enemies damaged by your conjuration skills, the 1% reduced damage. Stacking up to 15%. Plus, every five decks we got here, conjuration skills gain more damage. Actually missed one. Good thing we just saw this. So because we're going to reduce the potion healing. Oh. This one and put it actually in the decks. I can do this, I can do it here. So we now go to 188% crit damage. We could even put one more in this with this one. I just realized we need two more points. I, I'm gonna set this up properly in the planner so you, you see what you have to po uh, take. That's a lot of crit damage extra on our guys. So that's what we want with invocation. Then we go over here. Next one is the enchantment master. We don't need the 
Legendary notes. We just use this to get through this fast and we, we get another glyph. Destruction. Crit strikes increase all damage the enemy takes from you by 10% for 10 seconds, at uh, 2% up to 12%. Very great. Plus increased crit damage for all the dexterity, which we have most of them. We can't get all of them because we <coughs> run out of points eventually. Then here we go with non-physical damage and damage to elites. You want to have this and here as well. Um, maximum life, non-physical damage, and especially the damage to elites is very useful. This one, Ruinous. Uh, late against bosses, but bosses we do also shred fast. And the last one is Frigid Fate, which is mostly about cold, but we also do cold damage, so that works. If reinforced, we don't need the... Where is it even? This one? It would work, you see, the current bonus would be enough to do deal more damage, but we don't have the points to go there. We rather want to go with another Glyph, reinforced, because that gives us... 15% damage reduction while you have an active barrier because this is what you need to survive in higher levels. You need damage reduction and survivability. Also vulnerable damage and uh, cold rest is fine. We have them anyways. And we give more buff to the vulnerable damage and this one, for example, vulnerable damage, vulnerable damage, all that. Great. And here we have maximum life. So that's about the Paragon. Now for the items, we can actually... No, I'll show you in games. Items. Did I miss something? No, we're fine. Um, now, what you need, absolutely need, is the Fractured Winter Glass, and maybe a better one than I rolled there. Um, that's what you definitely need for this build, 100%. Because chance, to, chance for Frozen or Protect has to cast twice. That's great. Also, Conjuration cooldowns are reduced. This is kind of nice, um, but we don't really need it because the uh, Hydra is available anyway. But the Conjuration Mastery, four points into this, and casting a Frozen Orb has a chance to spawn a random Conjuration when it explodes. That's what we want, right? That's the thing. It also casts the other Conjurations that do a lot of damage. And your Conjurations have up to 82% chance to launch a Frozen Orb at nearby enemies. It's funny because you shoot the Frozen Orbs, but your Hydras also shoot Frozen Orbs. So it's a, a cycle, so to speak. And we have Tarasha's ir Iridescent Loop. Again, very useful. Lucky hit chance gives us more um, immobilize. Non-physical damage. Cooldown reduction on everything. Potent warding is great, helps us to survive better. And for each type of elemental damage, you deal gain 50%. Increase damage for 4 seconds up to 80, like maxed. Uh, dealing elemental damage refreshes all bonuses. So, just, just more damage on all our fire skills. For then, another the unique is uh, a Jesus heal room. I think this is actually quite a cheap build. Um, it has three uniques, but they're easy to get except for the Winter Glass, I guess. It's probably the toughest one to get. This You get this one from Valshan, very easy, he drops it quite a lot. Winter Glass is probably the toughest one to farm. This one drops pretty much everywhere. Um, you should have like 10 of these. Um, we need this, or we want this, because A, it gives us a more crit chance per movement speed, and we gain a lot of movement speed after killing elites, and especially critical strike damage increase in there. Very powerful, very, very powerful. If you have this... Very good. If you don't have it, you can just use boots with crit damage and crit chance. That also works. But these are great because of the movement speed. It helps us a lot to um, kite enemies and um, run away from damage. Then um, it's mostly intelligence, maximum life, and crit damage or crit chance. What you want to have on implicit is pretty much the same for all of these. I went with assault here because assault has crit damage implicit. It gives us even more damage, obviously. You want to have this. Um, Outside of this, as you can tell, intelligence life per second. This was actually a bad roll. I wanna I wanna replace this with a better one. Crit chance again. Plus three to frozen orb. You don't really need this. I could roll a better one, but it's also not bad. It gives you more damage on the orb. But you don't really need orb damage on points in the frozen orb. Um, I would rather go for crit damage, for example, or crit chance on this one. Int maximum life. Teleport also unnecessary. As you can tell, these ones are not perfect. I have them. Set up perfect as I would have them in the build planner I will send you below. Whoops, there it is. Um, for example, as you can tell, plus two defensive skills is great here, maximum life in um, plus three to Hydra. You need this one for sure. Or oh, what do we have here? Here after Frozen Orb, we don't really need it. Uh, life per second, maximum life in. So yeah, I'm just going to show you this one, but check the planner for the perfect, perfect ones. Just want to get over it fast. And uh, obviously we have resource generation. Oh, crit damage. I found this one. If you get a start one with crit damage maxed out, that's perfection because you want to get a lot of damage. And always in the maximum life. This is what you go for. 
Uh, it's infinite. This one actually a bad roll. So when it comes to tempering, it's usually very simple. You go with... With the weapons, you definitely need to go cast that Hydras have plus two heads. You want to roll this until you get the plus two heads, because that multiplies your damage by two every time you get an extra head, right? It's quite quite crazy. So you're going to have these... Uh, this is actually also a bad roll. I just saw one of this was plus two. And even with my... As you can tell, my imperfect gear I have... Not even master work much, just level one or tier one rather. Um, not even the proper implicits, or this isn't even tempered at all. And I was still shredding there, no problem. And uh, Varshan dies in two seconds, not even two seconds. Um, so it does a lot of damage with the Hydra. So I, I love that we actually have a Hydra build that works. So um, yeah, you want to also get your armor up because everything else we are lacking a little bit on armor. So get some total armor increase on your items. I think you have this on two. Yeah, these two. And you you want always want to cap your armor. You see, I don't, but you'll get to this in a second why this isn't kept. Otherwise, you go with Hydra damage, Hydra lucky hit chance. Um, we also had was it here? A yeah, resource generation, Hydra damage. Hydra damage is what you want to go for always if you can. Or lucky hit chance and armor, and go over uh, go hydra damage over just conjuration damage because hydra damage actually goes higher. It goes to like 125 percent, whereas conjuration damage goes to 90, I believe. So you want to have the hydra damage maxed out because that is your main damage dealer. Make no mistake, even though you do a lot of the frozen orb and you conjure lightning spears and your ice blades, the hydras do the most damage. Okay, this this is your DPS. That's what you want to focus on. Now for the aspects. One key thing you notice, I have only 7,000 armor here. We have this. You gain 0.7 increased armor for 4 seconds when you deal any form of damage. This caps our armor when we are fighting. We go over the 9,230, which is the max, max cap. Now, if you have items that have armor implicit, for example, you find one that has a um, plus 1... No, has, has a 1 star in armor, for example, that gives you 2,500 armor, and you cap this out right away. You don't need this. I'm going to give you in the build planner what other aspect you can go for it. This is just for me, just so you know. If you don't have the armor capped, you can use this. You don't really need another one. This is a free aspect we can kind of use for that. This one, casting Conjuration skill, grants you damage reduction, 20%. That's great, we need that. You may have one additional Hydra, you absolutely need that. This is the bare minimum you need this always, and Hydra duration is longer. Key thing. When you hit a crowd control enemy, this is a lucky hit, by the way. There is up to a 50% chance for that crowd control effect to spread. That means, because we will create a lot of vulnerable and a lot of immobilize. And if this hits, and you want, you have a lucky hit chance, and then a 50% chance of that lucky hit to spread to all the people around it. Again, this is insanely good in Infernal Hordes, or when there are many mobs. Insanely good. Frozen Orb explodes additional, two additional times at its destination. This one's also key. Because anytime a frozen orb explodes, as you can tell here, you have a chance to spawn a random conjuration. That's what we want. So we want to have as many frozen orb explosions as possible because that spawns other conjurations. Uh, deal 25% increased damage while you have a barrier active. Very simple, just more damage while barrier, which we have always. You deal increased damage to vulnerable while you have a barrier. Again, great combination here. And that's it for the aspect. <laughs> that was it. So when it comes to... That's pretty much for the items. Um, you can try to play around with things, but I think we're, we're good mostly on these. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you the enchantments. You want to enchant the Firebolt, obviously, for the burning damage. Like any skill does burning damage. And the Hydras, because that means... Uh, where is it? Yeah, after spending 200 mana, a five-headed Hydra spawns for seven seconds. So it's just one more, actually two more heads, red socks, that do damage. And for the Elixir, it's very simple. You want to have this one. You don't really need resource generation, you don't need max life, you don't need lucky. Lucky it helps you to have more immobilized, but I kind of like the elixir of precision because that means more crit chance by 6% and crit damage by 35. So you do even more damage with the elixir. Very powerful. Let me just quickly show you Varshan in the regular version. Not the tormented, just the regular Varshan as he is. You summon him, then you cast your hydras right away. Get into your barrier and then you just hit, start hitting him and he's dead. Now you can tell this went very fast. We'll ring the began actually. 
So this build is also very good at bossing. Oh, of course, we got another one. A worse one, though. Um, so yeah, I like this build a lot. Finally, the Hydras, these great guys over here. And actually, you can tell it's a lot. And I don't even have to max out, you can tell. I don't even have to max out gear. If you put some effort into masterworking or even getting proper gear for this one, this can absolutely shred. It's very great. So have fun with the Hydras. Great build. I enjoyed it a lot. Tell me what you think of it in the comments below. If you have any recommendations, what could be done differently. And check out the build planner in the description. Link is in the description. And I will guys see you in the next video. Until then, have a good time with your hydras.